Coming up tonight on YCN News, Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin explains why he thinks the state is not ready for single-payer health insurance. And fees may go up for the Claremont Community Center. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Thursday edition of YCN News. I'm Erin McClory. Single-payer health insurance will not happen for at least a year in Vermont. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin decided yesterday that the state is not yet ready to cover the cost of medical insurance for the, its residents. Not yet, anyway. He is not giving up on the idea, though. In an op-ed written and released to the media today, Shumlin explains why now is not the time to move forward with universal health care coverage. To have a plan where all residents would be medically covered requires taxes to go up. Businesses would need to pay an 11.5 payroll tax and residents would pay a 9.5% income tax. You can read the full text of Shumlin's letter on our blog, wycu.wordpress.com. In a related story, Republican Lieutenant Governor Phil Scott agreed with Shumlin's decision. Fees may go up in January or early next year at the new community center in Claremont. Seniors, those age 55 and older by center rules, and family memberships make up the two largest groups of people using the indoor recreation site. City councilors say the goal is to keep the center, complete with two indoor pools, affordable for residents and non-residents. Parks and Recreation Director Mark Brislin listened to councilors' suggestions to bring more money to run the center. Offering babysitting services, charging for extra gym classes are some ideas, says Ward 2 Councilor Charlene Lovett. Raising gym and building use would keep down the cost to Claremont taxpayers to run the center. For example, city property owners pay $0.72 cents per $1,000 valuation toward running the rec center. Based on property valued at $150,000, that means the tax bill for the center costs the homeowner $107. New Hampshire's Sullivan County Republicans have a new chairman. Charleston State Representative Steve Smith will take over for former Sunapee State Rep Beck Bowers. Smith tells YCN News he believes new House Speaker Sean Jasper wants to reach out to House lawmakers and work together. Smith says Jasper's appointment of Smith to lead the House Transportation Committee is positive proof Jasper wants a cooperative political relationship. In the past, explained Smith, he and Jasper did not see eye to eye on some issues. She's the only Republican member of the Twin States Congressional Delegation and so far she's the only one speaking against working more with Cuba. U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte says while she is glad American hostage Alan Gross is back in the U.S. after five years in a Cuban jail, now is not the time to lift some sanctions against the communist nation. President Barack Obama proposes lifting 50-year-old trade and travel restrictions. When YCN News returns, we'll learn about enrollment in the Lebanon Citizens Academy. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Erin McClory. Maybe it's an idea that will catch on in other upper and Connecticut River Valley towns, a citizen's academy. That's how Lebanon residents can learn more about how their municipal government works. Applications are due by Monday, January 12th. Classes will be held on 12 Thursday nights beginning in February and continuing through April. Each class is two hours long. To apply, go online to lebnh.net. Course descriptions can be reviewed there as well. A Cavendish, Vermont man is charged by police with assaulting another motorist and lying to a police officer after a road rage incident this morning. 34-year-old Nathan Lambert drove behind 23-year-old Travis Allen of Chester, Vermont. Police say Lambert began to tailgate Allen on Route 103 in Cavendish. Both cars were stopped behind a school bus that was letting off children. Then, according to police, Lambert got out of his vehicle and approached Allen who was sitting in his vehicle. Allen and two independent witnesses allege that Lambert reached into the driver's side window and began punching Allen. Allen got out to see Lambert's license plate number and Lambert allegedly began punching him again. Witnesses say they intervened and Lambert then drove away. Lambert reported that Allen had allegedly thrown an object at his car when he drove by and then allegedly kicked his headlight, which happened before Lambert allegedly punched Allen. Later this morning, state police took Lambert into custody. Lambert is free on personal recognizance until his January 27th court date. 
Arlington, Vermont resident Thomas Pack was not injured in a weather-related crash early this morning on Route 7 in Dorset, yet his new truck is a total loss. 51-year-old Pack was driving his 2014 Chevy truck along Route 7 when his truck went off the snow-covered road around 5.12 a.m. Police say it was snowing at that time, too. Pack was wearing a seatbelt. The truck hit the icy patch, Pack lost control of the vehicle, and the truck rolled over several times. Police say the truck is totaled. When YCN News returns, we'll join River Valley Chronicle's Elizabeth Dorazio. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Erin McClory. Let's find out the weather and look at sports. Thanks, Erin. Tonight will be mostly cloudy with a low around 23. Friday will be partly sunny with a high near 30. Friday night will be partly cloudy with a low around 16 degrees. Saturday will be mostly sunny with a high near 30. And Saturday night will be mostly cloudy with a low around 19 degrees. Snow Country Snapshot is brought to you by Bubba's Bar and Grill in Newbury, New Hampshire. Hey everybody, the Snow Country Snapshot is here and it's enjoying a little bit of snow here in Northern Vermont. It is a staple. I mean, this place is gorgeous. Definitely one of my favorite places to ride on the East Coast. I'll tell you why. The snow is always awesome. Why? Because they just invested $10 million into their snowmaking system over the course of the last three years. So if you do the math, that just means great conditions. Are you listening to me? Three days of snow last week and many of us rushed to the slopes to enjoy it. Mount Sunapee is opening their brand new Sun Bowl Express high-speed quad on Friday. Lots of high-speed groomed cruisers are waiting for you. Saturday is Gingerbread House Day at Ragged Mountain, which means their base lodge becomes a village of beautiful gingerbread houses, so practice self-control. They're for show, not for eating. I decided to check out Stowe's brand new Meadows Quad at Spruce Peak. It's beautiful, very comfy, and fast. Perfect for beginners, so by the end of the day, you're going to be probably an expert, maybe. Oh, by the way, check out that view. This Saturday, Okimo hosts the many of vertical challenges taking place all over the Northeast. It's a fun race and it's free, so join in. And check this out. You can get a free snowboard lesson at Bromley Mountain in their state-of-the-art terrain-based learning area. That's in honor of World Snowboard Day on Sunday. And Mount Snow's Nitro Terrain Park opens up this weekend. Great time here at Stowe. Snowcountry.com. Visit it. Weather and conditions. I'm Hallie O'Brien. See you next week. And now let's take a look at our community calendar. Tomorrow, check out a Christmas concert at the Calvary Independent Baptist Church in Lebanon starting at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, there will be a winter farmer's market in Brattleboro from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Robert H. Gibson River Garden. Don't forget to stop by Dan and Witt's General Store in Norwich to donate canned foods for the holidays. The food drive will be open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Remember, you can submit local events from your community by sending them to news at ycnnow.com. And now let's make a shift to local high school sports. There were two exciting games that happened yesterday involving our local teams. In girls basketball, it was a Newport vs. Sunapee rivalry. Sunapee truly showed their skill by dominating Newport in a 77-36 win. In boys ice hockey, Kearsarge faced Conval. It was Kearsarge who was the dominating team, winning 8-5 against their opponent. YCN Sports will bring you more high school sports results tomorrow. Thanks, Matt. When we return, we'll join Lisa Connell, who spoke with Alice Emmons from the Vermont House of Representatives. The YCN News continues in a moment. 